Okay, pigs, birds, listen up, please. I don't understand the origin of this feud. I mean, I get that the birds are angry now. Sure, they're angry because their eggs have been stolen. That totally makes sense. But the eggs have been stolen by you, pigs? That just doesn't track with me. I mean, mongoose, sure. They're famous for stealing bird eggs, right? Weasels, even. Maybe foxes, like fox in a hen house sort of thing. But pigs? Guys, what are you doing? Sure, you're known for eating, like, well, everything, but you're not famous enemies of birds, like, say, cats and mice, or cats and dogs, or cats and birds. Actually, Zoe, what's your problem with basically every living animal? <coughs> Yikes. Okay, um, but back to my point. Why are the pigs stealing the birds' eggs? I... Wait, you're saying this is a thing, not just a cartoon thing? Pigs are actually a threat to native bird species in real life? Oh, this is gonna be an episode, isn't it? As we've mentioned in the past, with native avian populations declining around the globe, we understand that the birds have every right to be angry. So once again, the folks over at Angry Birds commissioned us to make another Extra Extra History, both in celebration of their 15th anniversary and in hopes that if more people understood the dangers our feathered friends face, we humans can be more aware and help where we can. Which is why I really have to question you pigs here. Like, what's your problem for real? I understand that you're hungry and that nests on the ground make easy scavenging. That's instinct. But you're also really smart animals. Look at that. You're even building stuff around me right now. What is this contraption you're using your big brains for? Doesn't seem like you have to pick on the birds. I mean, why are you being such bad piggies? Wait. Oh, no. Not a Man, I'm really lucky they attach those balloons. Anyway, pigs. They're the cornerstone of human history and human exploration. Seriously, we did a whole episode about it. They're hardy, mature quickly, are easy to keep on ships, and will eat basically anything. Not to mention, they reproduce crazy fast, with a wild sow able to have up to 26 piglets per year. This made them equally a favorite of Polynesian voyagers and Spanish conquistadors, and helped them to become one of the most widely distributed species on Earth. But it also took a huge toll on the world, because all of the things that made pigs great tools for exploration, their hardiness, omnivorous diet, and general imperviousness to other native plants and animals, also made them environment-destroying machines. And both in history and today, one of the greatest victims of the pig's rampages are native birds, particularly through preying on eggs and destroying nesting grounds. Meaning, yeah, I guess Angry Birds is somewhat accurate. Pigs, or more accurately, feral pigs, are natural enemies of our feathered friends. Of course, it should be noted that occasionally it does go the other way with eagles known to prey on piglets. But overall, this conflict is massively one-sided. And while our previous episode touched on this environmental destruction, we never really closed the loop on how these issues are affecting the environment today. In a rising number of countries, from the southern United States to Canada to Australia and even Mediterranean nations like Spain and Italy, feral hogs are undergoing a population explosion. Something that Cody from Some More News has been telling us about for a while now. They've invaded the streets of Rome and are approaching the Vatican. In fact, both Rob's island hometown of Honolulu, Hawaii, and his adopted island of Hong Kong are both dealing with out-of-control populations of wild pigs. In some places like Europe, these boar might be native, but now are breeding out of control due to the decline of larger predators. In other places like the Americas and Hawaii, these pigs are an invasive species, descended from once domesticated agricultural animals that broke out and went, well, hog wild. Actually, now that we're on the subject, we should point out that a smaller swine known as the peccary, aka the javelina, is actually native to the American Southwest, Central and South America, and the Caribbean. So you get a pass, peccary, you cute little skunk pig. But regardless of whether they're native or not, hog populations are exploding due to a variety of factors, including the decline in natural predators like wolves we mentioned before, the ability to live off of the waste of human communities, and human suburbs pressing further into wildland, which has become a very large issue for birds. Ground nesting birds are particularly at risk, since rooting boars tend to devour eggs and disturb nesting sites. Worse though, boars by their very presence change the environment. Their rooting tusks rip and dig up vegetation in search of food, and they love to dig wallows to keep themselves cool with mud and dust. In fact, they're so adept at this that they've been dubbed ecosystem engineers since their behaviors have cascading effects that completely change whole environments, even to the point of causing landslides. In southwestern Europe, they've moved into the wetlands to threaten ducks and other water birds that nest in the reeds of the shore. And one study found that the higher the number of boar in an area, the lower reproductive success of the birds there. Though not just through nest predation, but likely through the animals rooting up reeds, so that nests are less protected from other predators, and of course befouling waterways with their toxic poop. 
In other wetlands, the same has been found for pelicans. And interestingly, birds that nest in clumps of plants growing out of deep water seem unaffected, suggesting even further that boar are the major culprit. And this problem is actually a global one. Recently, the Canadian province of Alberta began major attempts to eliminate groups of the animals when individual hunting had no effect. And that only made the surviving boar smarter at avoiding humans. Also, a recent report from the University of Hawaii found that over 300 plant species worldwide are directly threatened by pigs, which again causes a special danger to egg-laying species like birds, reptiles, and amphibians. Yet it's been hard to address this problem, because truthfully, people often sympathize with the pigs. Which makes sense, right? Because look at these little piggies! Sure, they're bad in their own way, but they're also kind of lovable too. In fact, recently when a sow and six piglets were euthanized in central Rome, it actually caused a public outrage because many people look at pigs as part of their community. And you know, that's also global. A popular keepsake shop in Hong Kong sells wild boar Christmas ornaments. After all, it is a zodiac animal. Plus, videos of boar smashing up stores full of mannequins or loose in subway stations are often shared as funny rather than threatening. Similarly, Hawaii's folklore is full of stories about the pig god Kamapua'a and his tumultuous relationship with the volcano goddess Pele. Plus, some rural families still hunt them for food, which just stresses that environmental management isn't easy. But, you know, there is one thing you can actually do to help, and it's honestly pretty simple. Don't feed wild pigs. Trust me, they're fine on their own. And if you do help out one pig, you might also be hurting another species that's in greater need of protection. Also, don't forget to heed agricultural regulations about what plants, animals, or seeds you're not supposed to bring into another country. But more broadly, this should also spur us to think about history and our role in it. Because when those explorers loaded pigs onto those ships centuries ago, they had no idea they'd be destroying the environment centuries later. But as students of history, we can use that and look at how our small actions today might have huge impacts for the future of birds, humans, and pigs. Because if we see further, we can make the world better. And together we can work to build a better fu- Wait, no, stop building. Stop it. No, stop. This isn't a better future. This is just you strapping me to a death trap. <laughs> the biggest bean thanks to Ahmed Ziad Turk, Angelo Valenciana, Arcalite Games, Dominic Valenciana, Izzy Coin, Joseph Blame, Kuyakoy, and Michael Hoggett for being our legendary patrons.